Welcome back to our 20th episode of the Launcher Farm Show, where I interview Sam Hewitt with Royal LePage Signature. Today, Sam and I discuss how she went from starting her career by answering phones at a brokerage to becoming an assistant with a top agent, then eventually went out on her own. After selling real estate for almost a decade, Sam wanted to share her experiences and decided to start training agents, which led her into a full-time role as the director of real estate development for her company. In this episode, Sam and I talk about why you need to find strategies in your farm that you actually enjoy doing. Sam shares how to build your business plan to ensure you have a full pipeline in 2021. We talk about what things you should be reviewing in your past year or two and how to figure out what your action plan should be for the next year. Sam shares a super easy way to avoid the roller coaster of real estate sales and how to stay more consistent. We also talk about how to create messages that serve your audience and how to segment your database to ensure you're providing value that serves them and builds trust. Plus, we talk about a ton of other insights and ideas that you can use to grow your farm. So be sure to check out this episode, like and subscribe, and enjoy the episode with Sam. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Launch Your Farm Show. I'm your host, Ryan, and today we got a great guest. It's Sam Hewitt with Royal Page Signature. So Sam, take a second, tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Thanks so much for having me. Hey, everybody. Great to be here. My name is Sam Hewitt. I'm the director of realtor development for Royal LePage Signature, uh, which is basically just a fancy way of saying I'm in charge of helping agents achieve their goals and do more business if that's what they're looking to do. Awesome. So how long have you been doing that? What's what's your story? My story. Oh, I've got a, I've got a storied story. Is that a thing? Yeah. Um, I actually started answering phones for a real estate company when I was in university, uh, okay. way, way back in the day now. Um, not that I'll date myself, but um, I started doing that. And then I had the opportunity to be an assistant for one of the top agents there. And during my tenure with her, you know, like I think a lot of real estate agents, you, you really get to know the business and the job and you realize, I, I think I could do this. Like, I think I'd be yeah. good at it. I think I have the right skill set. And so I got my license. I started selling when I was 21, which was really an uphill battle. Um, And I had some experience with farming, which I'm happy to share in a little bit and talk about how I was really unsuccessful and then (laughs) how I was really successful with farming and what worked for me. Um, So I sold real estate for for almost nine years. I was, I think I was pretty good at it. I had a good career. And uh, then I um, approached my, uh, my boss, my, the president of our company at the time. And I said, look, I really want to create like a training program for new salespeople. Cause I was naturally getting a lot of new agents coming to me and saying, what do I do? And how do I get started? Yep. Um, so I created this training program and they said, well, why don't you teach it? And I sort of just fell in love with this teaching idea and, you know, mentorship and coaching. And I spun it into a full-time gig and now uh, a decade later, here I am. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, going back to that, how you kind of fell into it. It's funny because with real estate, it tends to be one of those industries that most people fall into. It's not yes. one of those things that people are in school going, oh, I want to be a real estate agent unless they've got family members. Yes. So how did you, like, what what was going through your mind when you said you said you, you could do it? Like, why did you want to get into real estate? What was the the, the, the design or the desire for you to jump into it when you decided to? Yeah, great, great question. I think for me, I really, I watched this woman that I worked for who was very successful. I watched how structured she was and I really, I enjoy structure. And so I watched how she would set up her day and I watched how she would communicate with people. And I sort of, you know, understood the, where the problems came in, both from working front desk for, I mean, I worked the front desk for, for two years. It wasn't yep. a little time. It was quite a long time. Yep. Um, and getting to know the agents and listening to the conversations and listening to the manager talk and, and troubleshoot problems. I just felt like I really understood the business. And yep. then once I understood it and then I watched her be successful, she was a cold caller, um, which ironically isn't how I built my business. <laughs> but, you know, watching her cold call, I yep. was like, oh, she follows the script and the way she goes and yep. I could do that. Um, obviously it's harder to execute as we all know, watching this than it is to just <laughs> yes. watch somebody, which I learned. Yeah. Um, but that was sort of what it inspired me. Awesome. So I want to kind of dive into the, the, the you talked about farming and how you did it and how you, you yes. failed and succeeded. So when you got started, I won't say how long ago, cause you'd said, well, don't want to date yourself, but around the, when the, the internet was taking off, kind of things like that with picking up and, and with, with this business, what did it look like for you? And, and why do you think you failed? Yeah, so I I got my I'll, I will date myself. So I got my license okay. in in 04. And okay. um you know, when you get started, you listen to a lot of people and a lot of people say, "Well, you should do this and you should do that and you should do this." And people said to me, "You should start farming." 
So I said, okay, great. I'll start farming. So I picked a farm. I picked a neighborhood that I was familiar with. Um, and I just started sending out flyers. Yeah. That's what you were supposed to do, right? Send out flyers. Um, and nothing happened and it was expensive. And, you know, a year later I was like, that was, you know, seven or $8,000 down the drain. I didn't get a single call. It doesn't work. Um, which, you know, Ryan, you know, very well, that's not the case. And so after that, I moved, I, I lived downtown in this condo building and I started farming the building, but I also did so many other things. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, we started a little social committee, so we'd have social events. I organized, you know, sports teams and we went to the Jays games and, you know, I, I, I got on the board of directors and I served as the vice president and I would get the concierge of Christmas gift every year. And, you know, all of the sort of involvement and, and practical application that you talk about in your program yeah. that works was yeah. why I was able to be successful the second time. That's perfect. Cause that, I led you right into my trap with the, with that answer, because in the last 10 or 15 years, that's what happens with a lot of agents where they, if they have been told to farm, they haven't been giving a lot of advice. And that's usually sent out some postcards and agents mm -hmm. do that where they just send out stuff, nothing happens. And then they give up, they spend a lot of money and then go, this mm -hmm. doesn't work until yes. it takes something changes. Then they figured out like you did. Luckily, I think for you, that it was good mm -hmm. that you realized that there's, it's, there's more to it than just postcards and, and door. Yes. So what yes. happened in your in your headspace to shift to doing those things versus just sending out postcards and, and why did you not give up on farming? Yeah. I mean, I didn't give up on it because I found it enjoyable. I mean yeah. that, you know, I'm a social person, so it was fun organizing the events and getting to know new people and, you know, being a part of my community. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I think personally, I think if you're going to farm and you can choose your neighborhood, I think that really is, there's obviously pros and cons to it. I mean, sometimes I would leave my door and have the garbage and be in my pajamas and someone's like walking down the hall and you're like, ah. um, I think there's pros and cons to it for sure. But I also think, you know, if you can do something you enjoy, I mean this, you know, I go back to this agent I worked for when I was an admin. I mean, she enjoyed cold calling. That was yeah. her jam. She liked it. And so when she was in her farm, she was calling around the farm. She would send out a just listed for a new listing she had, and she would call around it for four hours a day. Yeah. So I think my advice would be, you've got to figure out what in the farming category you find enjoyable. And for me, I enjoyed the social aspect of farming. I enjoyed people getting the flyers and I enjoyed doing the smaller events. And I liked being in the elevator and someone would say, oh wait, aren't you that, are you that realtor who I get the, and I'm like, yeah, that's me. And yeah. then, you know, you have a conversation. I don't, I don't mind that. Some people don't like that. Some people, you know, want more privacy. They don't want to have to worry about that kind of stuff where they live. I think it's a personal choice, but for me, it was really effective. Yeah, that's and that's great. And it, I'm creating a uh, farming manifesto and, and it's kind of points that I believe in. And one of them is farming should be fun and that you should be able to oh, build your that. farm around something that you enjoy, that you that you like to do, that that really resonates with who you are. So it's great that you're able to find that because a lot of agents do where they hear one way of doing it. They hear cold call and then they try it. And they don't like it. They don't resonate with it, or they they do door knocking. It's not what they like. And when you can find something that that resonates with you, it's going to help really stick with you and, and do it. So today we're going to dive in more into actually planning around your business, and that's that's kind of your specialty, and that's kind of what you're about. <laughs> so let's jump right in and, and discuss business planning and as coming into 2021, how agents mm -hmm. can, can kind of do that in their farm. So that's, a, that's a great segue. I think in that last point you just made, Ryan, I think it's it's really what people have to remember when we talk about business planning. I think the most important thing that you can think about is, is authentic, authenticity to who you are. Yeah. And you're not going to do anything well that you don't like. Yeah. And so when we think about business planning, we think about farming, we think about you know creating a plan and all these other things. If it's not authentic to who you are, it's not going to come across in the way that you want and you're not going to attract business to yeah. you. You're always going to be chasing it. And I believe so wholeheartedly in this idea of authenticity and, and real estate and how they kind of marry together. Yeah. Um, but going back to your original question of business planning. So <laughs> obviously we are in the month of November, which, you know, before we got rolling, I said to Ryan with the cold weather and, you know, the, the pandemic, I just kind of want to like, you know, marry my couch and the Netflix <laughs> and that be it for the year. But, you know, this is arguably the most important time of the year for us as, as real estate salespeople, because what we do now is going to set up our Q1 of next year. And it's tempting to just say, you know what, I need a break and the year's over and I've made it. But you definitely have to go to the end and make sure that you really take care of the things that need to be taken care of. So you do have a full pipeline going into next year. 
Um, so that's the biggest thing I would say at this point in time, you know, given where we are right now, this is the most important thing you can do is, is the activities right now. Um, in terms of an overall business plan, I usually like to have agents review what they've done so far this year. Yeah. Obviously, it's, it's a bit of an anomaly for sure. Yes. Um, in our organization, we have a lot of people that are having their best year ever, which is incredible. Yeah. And we have other people that aren't. And so, you know, maybe you look at last year and this year and you figure out what did your numbers look like and how many ends did you do and what was your goal and, you know, how many open houses did you complete last year and how many, you know, touch points did you put into your database and how consistent were you in your prospecting activities to then kind of create a plan for what next year looks like. How many ends do you want to do next year? What are you going to do to get there? Um, we all know, you know, I know, this is a very reactive business. Yes. And the challenge, of course, is that we get busy working with our clients and we stop prospecting. And so we get these roller coasters. You see if you map out your year where it's like you do, you know, six ends in April and then all of a sudden there's nothing until like June again because you're, you stop those prospecting activities. And so- when it comes to business planning, I usually try to get realtors to think about, you know, what's your strategy in terms of harnessing your database and your farm? Yeah. You know, how are you going to get content out there consistently? How are you going to leverage video? You know, what tools are you going to provide? How are you going to use, gosh forbid, picking up the phone and calling people just to say like, hey, how are you? How are you going to get those leads to achieve that end count you want to achieve? Um, um, and obviously anyone watching, if you want a copy of my business plan, I'm happy to share it. Ryan and I were on awesome. the buzz conference together. Yeah. Um, and I talked about business planning and I'm happy to distribute that material to folks in terms of try to create something. But really, I think that a good business plan has to involve, you know, regular, uh, a regular review. It's not enough to make it now in November. And then, you know, in June of next year, be like, what did I, what did I, what was in here again? What did I have here? Yeah. You've got to be reviewing regularly to make sure you, um, you know, are, are, are hitting those goals you want to hit. Yeah. And it, I say it with farming, especially that you really need to have that plan in place as a, an overall kind of arching theme. And you may not follow it exactly because you may evolve as you go through it. COVID may hit, things may change and you may adapt, but you still have to plan out something. You still have to have a, a general basis. And even if what you send may change, how much you send or how often you should be hitting your audience should not change. So yeah. regardless of COVID's there, you should still be communicating on a regular basis, regardless of what you're sending. So for people to get started, let's say they're brand new to the business and they're laying out a plan. What would that look like? Like, how do you, how do you guide people into laying out that plan for them? Yeah. So I think you just made a great point there that I definitely want to emphasize for people yeah. is that I think when COVID hit, and again, depending on what happens as we make our way through, you know, the second wave here, I think the consistency is the key thing. And you just said that. I mean, I think the most successful realtors right now didn't stop their consistency. They just yeah. changed their messaging. Yeah. And that is whether your database or whether you're farming or whatever it is, there's a way to change the message. So it's sensitive to the environment we're in but still being front and center. And so that was really a key component of our success this year, I think as an organization, we really, we really focused on how can we help? You know, what, what do you need? How can we be of service to you? Um, and so the message was still there. It was, and the consistency was still there. It was just a little bit more sensitive to what we're going through right now. Um, your second question of what do I suggest for new people? I mean, I, you know, my, my soul, my, my, my life's passion every day is to wake up and figure out how I can help people, you know, achieve their goals, which typically means do more business. Sometimes it means do more business in less time. Sometimes it means grow my income. Sometimes it means, you know, bring on somebody. So I'm not doing so much grunt work, whatever the, whatever the case is, I think in our business, a lot can be solved by leads. I yep. mean, the more leads you have, the more you're able to choose who you work with. Yep. And, you know, the more picky you can get in terms of what your business looks like. So my sole focus when I'm, you know, creating plans for our, our team here at, at Royal LePage Signature is really just how do we get more leads? Mm -hmm. And so we have, you know, if we look at our database as a starting point, your, your message is completely correct. How, how many touch points are we sending out every month? What are we sending out every month? We actually have a a calendar created where every month I, oh, it's sitting on my desk here. It's <laughs> November. Um, every month we come up with, I come up with content options and I produce them here in our design studio. And I, 
um, you know, I distribute them to the sales team. So there's yeah. things like, you know, market updates, there's social posts, there's, um, you know, our, our team of mortgage brokers creates these seminars. So the agents just have to invite their clients and the mortgage broker runs the whole seminar. We do CMA updates and, you know, happy mother's day cards. And we did these really cute gift bags for Halloween. I had one around here a minute ago, but, um, so we, I mean, I, I, again, my whole life's focus is to really just create the plan for people so that their only responsibility is to go in and execute yeah. and try to get off that roller coaster of not yeah. prospecting regularly where it looks more like this. And hopefully it looks like that so that it's yeah. going, <laughs> exactly. you know, up, uh, yeah. which is typically what people are looking at. So my plan for people usually involves harnessing a few different avenues, and this is applicable for a database or farm. I think yeah. if you're if you're farming a neighborhood, you need to have different you know mediums of communication going into your database. It can't yeah. or into your farm. It can't just be flyers. We know that doesn't work. Yeah. So it's got to be flyers, and it's got to be you know events, and it's got to be um, phone calls, and it has to be social posts, and it has to be um, um, video and to face interactions. And you've got to kind of weave in all the different types because yeah. people consume content differently. Not everyone listening to this podcast right now, you know, is every single real estate agent on the Toronto real estate board. Some people don't listen to podcasts. And yeah. so I typically advise new agents to just follow what I've set out. Once you, um, you know, once we, if we bring on somebody that's a little bit more experienced and they already kind of have a foundation, then it becomes a matter of refinement. Yeah. And I find, experienced agents where they tend to fall down a little bit is they're just not communicating enough. Right. They, they have a lot of the, the basis down and they're very successful because that's why they're experienced, but they just need a little bit extra to try to get those extra referrals or they need a little bit extra to get a little bit more market share in that farm area. Yep. And that's kind of where I take a more individual approach to the agent. And I look right. at authentically who they are and what they like yep. to try to help them harness that to get where they want to go. That's a great point. You talked about the weaving in the different styles and that's in, in my side of things, I call it strategy stacking where you're putting in different layers of strategies to build a, like a safety net and it creates an opportunity for you to hit people in different ways. Like you said, not everyone's going to be answering doors. Someone may not open their email. Someone may not be on social on Facebook and they may be on different things. And then I, I use the scope method, which is self-promotion community online uh, prospecting and education. And when you weave those into your whole plan and you can look at the whole year or the, the quarter at a time and say, okay, how can I start putting in those pieces to hit people in, in different ways? So it's, it's great to do that because a lot of agents will hear like, they'll say like, I'm a door knocker or I'm a cold caller. And then that's their approach. And that's great. But you got to think, how can I add in other ways to reach people? And, and if you want to get the most out of it, you can, mm -hmm. there's people who do fantastic businesses just cold calling they never even picked up an email they don't even know how to use social media and things like that and they do good businesses but if you want to have a, a balanced business or to take it to the next level you have to really plan and if you don't plan ahead that's when a month goes by two months goes by three months goes by and you're not executing on those those plans so mm -hmm. do you have any any kind of like basic metrics that you like to use because i know some agents will yes pick appointments or some people will pick calls or some people will pick touches mm -hmm. like what's kind of the mm -hmm. metrics that you use when you're helping agents plan yeah so i think you number one i think you need to have either a, an end count goal or a gci goal um yep. you know some some agents use gci some agents use end count um, I had somebody last week that came in to see me and they said, um, you know, I, I want to increase my average price point. Uh, you know, my, most of my deals are like seven or $800,000, which is nothing to sneeze at, but yeah. you know, I get it. And I said, okay, great. And he said, I want to go after this new neighborhood. I want to start farming this neighborhood with $2 million houses. And I yeah. said, okay, well, how many deals did you do this year? And he said, I did 15. And I said, okay, well, what if you'd done 30 deals? would it matter what your average price point was? Yeah. And maybe it would, you know, maybe it still would, I'm not sure. But I think sometimes you've got to focus on what matters to you. And when I tell people to focus on really what they want to track, I mean yeah. like really focus, like yeah. put it on a post-it note and stick it in your mirror, yeah. write it on your whiteboard, you know, look at it every day in the morning. Like really, I think the, the first metric that's super important is just where am I going? Yeah. Um, in terms of how many deals do I want to do or what I want, what I want my income to be. And then the second thing I usually ask people to track, which you wouldn't think about is split of buyers versus sellers. Yeah. Um, and the reason I do is because I think that if agents can shift their business into being listing agents, I think they're naturally going to be able to do more volume. 
um, because it's a little bit easier to carry listings, although it's more expensive. It is a little bit easier on an overall time resource perspective. So I asked them to look at that quite carefully. And that, again, helps drive that conversation between strategy like you just talked about. So if you want more listings, farming is kind of one of the best ways to do that. And so does that need to be our strategy going into 2021? Um, Other metrics I ask them to track is number of communications that go into their database or their farm area. So most people do not communicate at the level they should be. And it's because we're such polite Canadians. (laughs) Uh, That's my theory. Anyways, they think, you know, I don't want to bug people or I can't be aggressive or, but in reality, if you get like a, you know, a, a newsletter in your email from, you know, insert sales professional here, you're going to look at it and go, ah, delete. So the stickiness of that one communication piece is so little that that's the reason why you have to put so many communication pieces into your your database or your farm. And I think sometimes people get caught a little bit on the database side where they'll say to me, well, yeah, but I'm really active on social. Okay, great. I mean, you should be. But the algorithms are such that you never really know who's seeing what you're sending. And that's where you know, you called it a stacking strategy. I call it a a connectivity plan where you have different mediums of communication going out in a variety of different ways. And I typically tell people to strive for four to five a month as another metric, you know, one newsletter, one video, one social post, one this, one that. And I know one social post isn't enough. And if our friend (laughs) Stacy Secrets was here, she'd like (laughs) smack me in the head. Um, But that's sort of four to five times, which sounds like a lot. Yeah. But in reality, you know, a newsletter that goes out is going to be a a three second stickiness factor. And so it's not a lot. And that's kind of the the other metric I look at. So end counter GCI percentage of of listings to buyers, and then how many communication pieces are going out into your database or into your farm area. And like you said, that people are worried that they're going to annoy people. If I did four newsletters in a month, they may be annoyed because it's the same medium. Yes, but if I did exactly. one phone call a month, one newsletter, one social post, and one birthday card, it doesn't have the same effect. And it's because it's hitting people from different avenues and different ways. To, to And you're actually hitting different parts of the brain to, to connect with them. So, yeah, it's great to to make sure you you have a more holistic approach when you're... Holistic. That's a good word. I like that. Yeah. Holistic approach, I think, is the great way to put it. Especially, too, because out of those four or five you know communication tools you choose... I may only see one a month. Like I may not see your social posts and your newsletter may end up in spam. And I, you know, see your call and then I forget to call you back. I mean, it's, it's not as though people are um, sitting around thinking, how can I better support my realtor? You know, it's not that they don't like you and they don't care about you. It's just, we're busy and we have busy lives and we have so much coming at us on a regular basis that you're just not top of mind if you're not communicating that heavily, whether it's farm or database. And not to toot farming its own horn, but that's part of why I think farming is such a great opportunity because because you're able to provide value to the community. You're able to stay in touch with the community. You're able to build relationships with the community without having to be real estate all the time. And if you're just doing typical real estate transactions or you're just doing just cold calling without providing that value outside of the real estate world, it's harder to build those relationships and stay in touch with people. And I find and my, my experience has been that's where agents struggle going, well, how do I create content? Because they they only think real estate. And then they go, yes. well, I, then then you tend to be annoying to those agents or to those clients because all you're talking about is real estate. And then that's where it's like, what can, what value are you adding to their life outside of real estate? And if you're not, you're not going to get the same enough the, the max amount of people you could be getting. You're not building strong relationships because it's just, just real estate. So exactly. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I think that's such a great point. This is still a relationship based business. I mean, you can throw whatever tool you want at it, you know, the social and video and everything else, but it's still at the end of the day, just about building relationships with people trusting you. And, you know, I think the more, again, going back to that authenticity word, the more authentic you can be with what it is you're doing. I mean, last week I said to people, in Toronto, Halloween is canceled. So, you know, our, our, one of our touch points was dropping by with little cute little bags of candy for people yeah. that have children on your database. And, you know, this very nice man came in to see me and he said, I, I can't do that because I'm, you know, a middle-aged white man. And I said, <laughs> well, you can, as long as you're not creepy about it, yeah. but you know, if that's not your jam, that's okay. Then do something else that speaks yeah. to you and who you are. But if all you're doing all the time is being a talking you know, real estate advertisement for your business, 
you're missing the mark for sure. Yeah. And, you know, when people put up like the just listed and the just sold content, yeah, I mean, your clients need to see that you're busy and you're doing deals, but they kind of just assume we do that. Like, it's yeah. not like our doctor is putting up like, you know, I doctored today on social. I mean, <laughs> exactly. we expect they do that. That's yeah. their job. Yeah. And so I think for us, it's the same thing. It, you're, you can't be all real estate focused in your content. And that's what you teach in your farming strategy, which is so smart. I mean, yeah. you've got to have, you've got to be a real person first before you're a realtor. And I think too, is if you're, whether you're building your database or the farm itself is understanding who is in that farm and who's in that database and understanding the messages that want to be that you can reach the people. And I recently had Andrew Fuliato from Just Sell Homes on. Oh yeah, I love Andrew. He's awesome. And and we were talking about, I had a, a client that was a mom. So then she wanted to go after moms. And then she, she, she split the list into working moms and stay at home moms. And she, because she was a working mom, she resonated with the working moms and was able to create content that, and he said the, the open rates and the, the, just the conversions from the working moms just went through the roof. So when you're building your message, it's, you have to understand talk about being authentic to who you are, what's going to resonate with those people. And if you try to blanket the same real estate message to a thousand people in your farm or to your database, you're not going to have the same results versus having that hyper targeted content and the right type of message. So do you mm -hmm. talk about that with planning about creating yeah. kind of micro content? Yeah, a hundred, a hundred percent. We talk a lot about micro events. That's one of the right. big things that we do have a lot of conversations about. And I think, you know, Andrew's super smart and he's built a great business yeah. on that exact principle. I mean, Consumers are smart. People are smart. We're, we're educated. We see through the, you know, the BS yeah. and, you know, people want real. I think real people want real. Yeah. Um, and you and I talked before we started and you said, you know, are you following a whole script? And I was like, oh God, am I supposed to be? No, of course not. I'm just going to have a conversation with you. Yeah. This is who I am. But I think, you know, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. You've got to be able to deliver to people what they're looking for. And one yeah. message for everyone is not going to be the same. Um, and so I think being able to figure out like, who, who am I serving and what do they need? Um, and so as much as in a database plan, we talk about this idea of going wide where you should have four to five, you know, communication pieces going out every month. You also need to look through whether it's the people, you know, in your farm area or whether that's people on your database and you've got to figure out, you know, what do they need? How can I serve them? How can I provide content to them? How can I build a relationship with them that best serves them? Yeah. Um, and so obviously, you know, being able to craft a message for working moms is going to be very different from stay at home moms, yeah. but ultimately people want to do business with people like them. Yeah. And we all want to feel heard and understood and valued. And the more you can do that, the more you can build those relationships authentically to who you are, the more successful you're going to be in any business, exactly. not just real estate. At one of the, my manifesto beliefs is that your farm is your funnel and that the farm itself, a lot of people think the farm is their source of business. The reality is the farm should funnel into your database and your real yes. farm is the database itself of the people, whether it's in your farm or your, any area that you're going after. And people don't realize that they, they try to reach and be all things to the, the thousand people in your farm. It's like, no, who are the 200 people I can get in that farm into mm -hmm. my database and build relationships with and connect with and have, be, have authentic relationships. Cause there's going to be certain people that are never going to do business with you. They've got mm -hmm. a brother, they're an agent themselves. They've got mm -hmm. a family member. They just, they just don't mm -hmm. like you. So it's how do you connect with the people in that farm and build a plan mm -hmm. around to mm -hmm. capture the most amount of people, but the most authentic people that Mm -hmm. going to resonate with. I love that you said that. I love that you said that. I think that a lot of agents think that farming is sending out newsletters and yeah. they, they think about it like, oh, you just keep sending out the newsletters and eventually the phone rings and that's yeah. not how it works. Yeah. I mean, the, the farm really is just, it's just a database. It's just yeah. a, a, a geographic database, really. I mean, yeah. that's all it is. Exactly. Um, and I love that that's the philosophy that you teach people because it works. Farming is one of the most successful ways you can build your business, um, but I, you've got to follow so. the right <laughs> strategy. Yeah. yeah. You've got dedicated to it, I would imagine. But as you know, you got to, you know, develop the right strategy behind it. You can't just go at it, you know, try your best and hope, hope's, hope's not a strategy. So that that segues perfectly into the, the next question I want to ask is when you're coming up with these plans, where are you getting agents to, or where are agents coming up with the ideas from? If, if they're not working with someone like you to help them do that, how can an agent mm. come up with the right type of strategies? Because I find mm -hmm. agents kind of copy what they think works or what they saw someone else do mm -hmm. without understanding it. So mm -hmm. how are you helping agents or what would you suggest to agents to lay out plans that will actually be 
that work. Yeah. yeah. So obviously the, the, the R and D strategy of rip off and duplicate doesn't <laughs> yeah. always work. Yes. Um, I, I think that you, you want to look at if you are not, first of all, if you're not part of an organization that supports you to this level, you should fix that for sure. Yes. Um, you know, you, you want to be a part of something that you feel you're getting that kind of support. Um, but outside of that, I think that there are organizations, there's groups, there's things like the buzz conference, yeah. you know, you want to listen to industry experts, you want to harness, you know, if you want to start farming and you haven't looked at Ryan's website and his programs, you know, you're missing the mark. If you want to build a really awesome database and you haven't looked at, you know, some of the top trainers that offer free consultations for 30 minutes, that'll yeah. help you kind of develop a plan. Um, you know, harness other top agents that are willing to, to talk to you. There's lots of agents that are willing to give back and yeah. will tell you what they did that worked. And, you know, they'll sit down with you and spend half an hour and kind of craft something out. Yeah. I think there's, you know, there's people naturally, I think, want to help. I think that naturally, you know, we are a giving, we come from a place of giving. And I think that if you ask, most people are more than willing to help. Yeah. But what I will say is just don't, don't flounder. Don't try to figure it out on your own. If you really don't know, don't try to guess, don't try to think, oh, well, I saw this person doing it. So it must work, yeah. you know, really try to get the help and the resources you need um, and rely on people. Like, I mean, Ryan, your, your program is amazing and your content's yeah. unreal. And it's like, I can't believe I just stumbled upon you when we were <laughs> doing the buzz together because it's, you know, I believe in farming so much and I've got my own kind of system to it that I teach, but yours is, is way better, frankly. No, oh, well, thank you. But that the, the one thing I've always said about our industry is that we've got over a hundred years of proven fundamentals with real estate. So the fundamentals don't change. Like we talked about, it's it's about building relationships, about connecting mm -hmm. people, and the real estate fundamentals haven't changed. The strategies and the tactics you use may change, but the core of what makes real estate work is going to be the same for the next fifty years, hundred years, unless something completely changes. Versus another industry where if you're starting to make an industry from scratch you're having to learn how the business works. We can look back for the last hundred years and say, okay, what has worked? What's worked with agents? What's been fundamentally the most important things? And it's communicating on a regular basis, providing value to people, staying in contact with people and building your list. And like that, it, that doesn't change. We don't have to reinvent anything. So it's building your business plan around those fundamentals of staying in touch with people, mm -hmm. providing value to them and, and mm -hmm. grow your list. That's, mm -hmm. that's really the, mm -hmm. the key to it. That's in my it. Opinion. That's the secret. So that's the secret that I, and it's not even a secret. That's the cool part about it. <laughs> it's not like some <laughs> lock away in a vault and no one knows. It's like, that's day one in real estate. That should be what you're learning and understanding that. So for agents, if they're looking to get their business plan started, what's one piece of advice that you'd give if they're looking to, to get 2021 kind of kicked off and, and laid out, what was one last piece of advice you'd share with our audience? Yeah, the last piece of advice would be to find a business plan and, and actually just sit down with it and, you know, yeah. really dedicate the time. I think we get so busy working in our business, we forget to work on it. Um, really sit down, dedicate a couple hours and really get hyper focused on what you want it to look like. If you'd like my business plan, feel free to email me. I will give you all my contact info awesome. when we're done here or find one on the, online. If you Google business plans for realtors, there's a million awesome. links that'll pop up. But definitely like just spend the time on it and get really focused on what it looks like and review it often because days turn into weeks, turn into months pretty quickly. <laughs> and so you really want to make sure, okay, my goal was X number of deals this month and I fell short and X number of communication pieces this month and I fell short. Okay. I've got to pick it up now for the yeah. next 30 days, you know, really treat your business like a business and you'll be, you'll be rewarded in spades for sure. So if they don't take you up on that awesome offer of getting your business plan, what things should they look for in a business plan? If they're trying to find one, like what kind of things do you think is important for them to be looking for? Yeah. So, so number one is the metrics around what you're tracking. Yeah. Um, so I talked about, you know, deal volume, percentage of listings versus buyers, you know, communication pieces that are going out. The second thing is the strategy. So how are you going to generate those leads? Are you going to pick just database? Are you going to pick farming? Are you going to pick both? Are you going to use online leads? you know, pick an avenue to figure out the business plan should say what avenue are you going to use to generate this business? Yeah. Um, and what are those, what do those strategies look like around there? So, you know, do I need to, how much money do I need to start my farm? What do I need to be sending out in my database? What is the cost around that? You know, and then the business plan should talk about review. How often are you reviewing yeah. it? How are you breaking the numbers down into manageable pieces? Um, you know, what does that sort of look like overall on a uh, metric perspective? And, and how then, often do you, 
Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and then execution. Like, yeah. how are you executing on it? How are you staying accountable? There's zero accountability in yes. this great business <laughs> we're in, right? Like, yeah. you can watch Netflix all day, no one cares. Um, how are you staying accountable? Yeah. And if you know you need accountability to be successful, how are you going to get that for yourself? I was going to ask is how, how often do you recommend someone goes and reviews their plan? Because I've seen agents do it where they, they get gung-ho, it's the end of the year and they come up with this plan and then it gets put in a drawer and they don't look at it. Like, how often should they be reviewing it shifting through it and, and adjusting if, if needed. So m- monthly for sure, okay. for sure you should be reviewing every month, but I actually, um, I know some people that do this and they really like it. I do it too. I actually do like a weekly review and not, you know, hours for hours, but just, you know, 30 minutes of like, you know, wherever all your stuff is, you can see my desk right now. I have like paper <laughs> and calendars. I've got the business plan here. You know, every week I kind of go, okay, what was I trying to get done this? Okay. I was going to do that. Okay. That, that didn't get done. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Okay. But I did this, this, and this. Okay. I did this deal. I did that deal. Okay, great. Just sort of, you know, where am I and how do I move forward? How do yeah. I take that minute out of the reactiveness of like, oh, now I need an amendment. I need this. And all oh, the, they took the blinds and so much minutia that happens in what we do every day, but really just, is it 30 minutes a week that you sit down and go, okay, strategically, where am I and where do I need to get to? And then I think once a month, really reviewing where you were, what you've done, where have you fallen off? You know, if you've had an amazing month and you've done five or six or 10 deals that month, and all of a sudden you're like, well, I did nothing on my plan because I had a killer month. Great. Perfect. But the idea is you keep it going, right? Yeah. And so then you've got to get back on track with that the planning component to it. And that's a great point because I think a lot of people go one way or the other where they have a great time and then they forget it but, or they beat themselves up because they didn't accomplish every single thing on their list. Then they just lose steam on it as well. Or it's like, I, I need to have these five things and I only hit three of them. It's like, give you have to give yourself credit for the three that you did and, and keep moving and then go, okay, do I need to adjust as you? as you go along too. Yeah, that's, that's something I really, I really wholeheartedly believe in that I try to encourage people. Do not get caught in the perfection trap. Yeah. Like A, don't get caught in perfection and B, don't get caught in comparison. Like yeah. this business is so awful for that. You know, you go somewhere, you do something and it's like, oh, well, this person got that listing or this person drives this. I mean, don't get caught in that perfection that, well, you didn't do every single thing and so therefore you didn't get enough done. I mean, yeah. you've got to, you got to be your own champion. You've got to pat yourself on the back and say, you're doing a great job and, you know, keep yourself going because it can get lonely. You agree? Yes. Like it's, it's, it's a lonely, yes. it's a lonely business, I think. And so, you know, you've got to be kind to yourself if you want to keep that, that momentum and that, and that mindset going, cause it's a mindset game. So we'll shift that to the last piece of advice is to be kind to yourself. We'll, we'll use that as our way to, to wrap yourself. out. Yes. And, and keep going. So that's, that was great. Uh, one of the segments we do is your best book. So what's a great book that you'd recommend oh, to agents that's had yes. an impact on you or you think would have an impact on them? Yeah. So um, it, the, the very best book that I'm in love with right now is called Story Brand yep, uh, story by book. a very smart guy named uh, Donald Miller. And basically it's the concept of how great brands make the customer the hero instead of the brand being the hero. Yeah. Um, and it talks about how to write your messaging and how to communicate so that the client feels like, you know, they're solving their own problems and you're the guide on their journey. It's very smart. He has some really smart examples. It's a great way to look about things. And it's really kind of going back to that, you know, component we talked about earlier, Ryan, where you said like, you know, speaking to people the way they want to be communicated to and making yeah. them feel heard and understood and valued. Yeah. It's sort of the basis for what he talks about. It's a great read. If you yeah. haven't checked it out, Story Brand by Donald Miller. Yeah, I, a friend of mine recommended it to me. And it was, it's great. It's, and it's nice because it takes you through the process of actually yes. doing that. It's, it's not just theoretical stuff. It's like, okay, step one, do this and, and kind of work through it. So that's yes. a great recommendation. Yeah. So how can our viewers check out what you're up to and how can they get a copy of your uh, business plan? Yes. So if you'd like my business plan, I'm Sam, S-A-M, at RoyalLePageSignature.com. Shoot me an email and I'll send you my business plan. If you want to follow me on social, on Instagram, I'm underscore Sam underscore Hewitt. And on Facebook, it's just Sam Hewitt. Awesome. I'll put that in the notes below so people can check that out. So thank you for being on the on the show. I really appreciate it. Some great Thanks. content. It was awesome, like you said, to connect Thanks that buzz me, and, and pulling this together. So it was great. And uh, looking forward to a t- great 2021 for obviously for you guys and for the audience and, and hopefully for you guys at your office at uh, Royal Page Signature as well. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate awesome. you and your service to our business. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Take care. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. 
Thanks for checking out today's episode. If you'd like more videos like this, be sure to sub like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook page and our other social media channels. Looking forward to bringing you more great content like this and happy farming. <laughs>